Hello everyone, in this video we will be making ferrous oxalate. For this synthesis we will first of all need iron 2 sulfate and oxalic acid. Iron 2 sulfate heptahydrate, or simply ferrous sulfate, can be easily bought in a gardening store where it is sold as a fungicide. Of course, it is quite far from pure when compared to laboratory grade ferrous sulfate, but for the sake of interest, I decided to use it nonetheless. Oxalic acid dihydrate is most commonly found in hardware stores where it is sold as wood bleach or a rust remover. Where I live, however, it is not as easy to find, so my oxalic acid is from a chemical supplier. We will also need a bit of sulfuric acid, which can be bought in an auto supply store as battery acid. To start, we add 100 grams of ferrous sulfate heptahydrate to a beaker. Next, we dissolve everything in 250 milliliters of hot water. The solution becomes murky brown due to a suspension of basic ferric sulfate. To dissolve it, we add 15 milliliters of 37% sulfuric acid. Overall, the concentration of ferric ions is quite low, and since they do not give a precipitate with oxalic acid, they won't interfere with our synthesis. Garden grade ferrous sulfate can also be slightly contaminated with sulfates of other metals, but for our purposes this can be disregarded. Our solution won't turn completely clear, but that doesn't matter. A few insoluble impurities can be seen on the bottom. To get rid of them, we decant the solution into another beaker. The second beaker turned out to be too small, so I washed the first one and transferred the solution back into it. Next, we add 45.4 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate to a separate beaker and dissolve it in 150 milliliters of hot water. Now we can add our solution of oxalic acid to the solution of ferrous sulfate. The solution initially becomes dark brown, which I presume is related to the formation of complex ferrooxalate ions. Ferrooxalate ions in solution give a red color, which, in combination with the green solution of ferrous sulfate, gives brown. The complex, however, is quickly destroyed and the solution turns yellow due to the precipitation of ferrous oxalate. Ignoring the intermediate ones, the overall reaction is quite simple. Ferrous sulfate reacts with oxalic acid, forming a precipitate of ferrous oxalate and sulfuric acid. Now let the solution stand for 10 minutes to allow the precipitate to settle to the bottom. The yellow color of the solution can be explained by the presence of leftover ferric ions. Now we can decant the solution into another beaker. Since I'm not going to extract anything from it, it can be discarded. Before filtering, it is best to wash the precipitate with water a few times. Since I'm filtering under a vacuum, one washing is enough for me. Once the precipitate settles, we can decant the water. The precipitate is then added to a glass filter funnel.
just in case I decided to give it another washing. The precipitate is then scraped out of the funnel, dumped onto a piece of paper and left to dry. After a day, our ferrous oxalate is completely dry and can be easily pulverized with a spoon. In the end, we managed to obtain 49.45 grams of ferrous oxalate, which corresponds to a percent yield of 95.6%. Let's put a small amount of our oxalate into a test tube and plug it with a bit of cotton. Now we can light our butane torch and start heating the test tube. The gas produced almost pushed our ferrous oxalate outside the test tube, so it was quite a good idea to plug it. Upon heating, ferrous oxalate decomposes to ferrous oxide, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide partially reduces ferrous oxide to iron metal, forming carbon dioxide. Part of the ferrous oxide can also disproportionate to iron metal and magnetite. The resulting mixture of iron and its oxides is definitely magnetic. The particles of iron metal that we've made are extremely fine and pyrophoric, meaning that they can ignite upon contact with air. If we dump out our pyrophoric iron from a small height, it will form a nice shower of sparks. Upon contact with air, particles of pyrophoric iron immediately combust, forming magnetite. If there is any ferrous oxide present, it is also oxidized to magnetite. Now let's try to scale up this experiment by taking a larger amount of ferrous oxalate. The result is much more impressive. Besides making pyrophoric iron, ferrous oxalate can also be used to make potassium ferrooxalate or to decompose hydrogen peroxide. That's all for this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.